up and running. Hopefully, hopefully you can see me. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, what was I doing? Um, yeah, today we are going to talk about how you can monetize cooking, which is really cool. Really simple, very straightforward. And the, the cool part is, is you don't have to feel scammy or slimy or, you know, some of those other things that you might feel if you are trying to become a parentpreneur. Now, my name is Alston, Alston Godbolt, and I, I primarily create content for new parentpreneurs, people that are looking to get started uh, with their online business, and, and they don't want to jump into teaching people how to make money online because, you know, that's not for everybody. Um, I talk about some bo the boring stuff, um, and I've made money with boring stuff like stand mixers and microwaves, all stuff that, believe it or not, people are buying millions of times per day, thousands of times per day at the very least, and it's something you could do too. But we're going to talk about today um, affiliate marketing for cooking or monetizing cooking. And to get started, let me just give you a quick example. Uh, yesterday, I smoked some salmon. And um, I have a, I think it's a master built smoker. And what I had to do, and what I've had to do in the past, and the day before, I actually smoked some uh, pork shoulder because I was trying to make uh, pulled pork. And so what I had to do is I had to go to the internet and I had to type in, you know, how long does it take to smoke salmon or smoke salmon recipes? Um, how, how long does it take to smoke pork shoulder at a certain temperature? Now, believe it or not, those queries could lead to affiliate commissions. And there are tons of stuff that you could promote as an affiliate. Now, if you have questions about getting started, um, I should not, maybe not affiliate. There are tons of ways that you could monetize this type of content. And we're going to talk about all of them. Um, but let's go ahead and run down what we need to do so that we can start doing it. The first thing that you want to do is you want to pick a niche and then a sub niche. Now, cooking is our niche. Within cooking, there are so many different avenues. Um, I have a, a Blackstone grill, outdoor grill. That's one sub niche. I have a smoker. That's a second sub niche. I have a, a regular uh, grill. That's a third sub niche. You can even talk about keto cooking and desserts and all sorts of stuff. The absolute, absolute first thing that you want to do is you want to identify a sub audience within cooking because cooking is wide. It's, you know, it's vast. People could just focus on Asian cuisine or Japanese cuisine or German or whatever it may be. So that's the step number one. Once you identify your sub niche, you want to go out and find different ways to monetize it. Now, if you're thinking about this, you could monetize it with affiliate marketing. You could monetize it with digital products. You could monetize it really with physical products. And you could even start a membership, which we can we can talk about those four things. Um, if you are looking to get up and running as quickly as possible, I'd look at affiliate products and I'd look at creating maybe a digital product. Um, those are all things that I, I would look look at. Hey, thanks for the likes for coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, lots of likes very early on. Thank you very much for the, for the likes. Um, but the cool thing is, is when you think about cooking, there's so many different things that you can promote. You can promote everything from the aprons, you know, the kiss the cook aprons to um, the smokers. Now, some of those smokers are $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. And with affiliate marketing, you partner with a company and they're going to pay you a portion. Now, the cool thing with being a, a digital or internet entrepreneur is you don't just have to do affiliate marketing. You don't just have to sell digital products. You could create an ecosystem of selling all sorts of stuff, and that's how you really build a sustainable business. So again, you hey, thanks for the whatever that was. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, anyway, again, there are at least five ways that you could monetize this. You could create um, a digital product, maybe like a little recipe book. You could even make a course. Think about that. If you have proven recipes or maybe if you've won competitions on, on how to smoke a steak or how to smoke ribs or something like that, you can actually put that together in a course. Um, and then you can put affiliate products in the course and, and believe it or not, that's a great opportunity. Um, you could do a, a monthly membership or, you know, kind of like a, a, an online or virtual cooking session. Anyway, let's talk more about the monetization in, in a second, but let's talk about the secret to your success. 
Now, a lot of people gloss over this, but in my opinion, this is the most important aspect of your business. And it's actually email marketing. Now, not a lot of people will talk about email marketing or cover it thoroughly, but in my opinion, email marketing is the best way to have a long-term sustainable business. Without email marketing, you are you basically only have one shot at people. Um, <laughs> with email marketing, you only have one shot at people. Or without email marketing, you have one shot at people. With email marketing, you can market to the same people over and over and over again. You can find out what they need, what their wants are, and then you could either make it or be an affiliate for someone that's already made it, and then you can promote that. But email marketing is comprised of four parts, a lead magnet, um, a landing page, autoresponder, and broadcast email. A lead magnet is something that you're going to give away in exchange for their name and their email address. If we are in the cooking niche, we might give away a checklist. We could give away maybe like a mini cookbook. Uh, we could give away, uh, let's think of some things that we could actually give away um, to our, our niche. So let's say our, our, our niche is, um, is like smoking stuff. You know, we're, we've got an outdoor smoking channel. We could give away a, a checklist or a guide of temperatures and times. For example, you know, um, I just talked about smoked salmon, smoked um, ribs, smoked pork shoulder. We could say, is there internet tax for, for e-marketing? Uh, you have to check with your local state federal guidelines in order to, to figure out your taxes. I'm not your tax guy. Um, we could put together a list. I know when I bought my my grill, it actually had like a little laminate problem. Bro, you professor. I've actually I actually used to teach um, adult education courses. So people that were older, you know, 25 and up, they were um, coming back to school to get their bachelor's degree. So I've taught adults before. So technically, I, I have been a professor. Anyway, um, you could put together a checklist of, of smoking times, or you can even pair, um, if you know anything about smoking, you can pair different wood chips to different types of food, give that away for free. If they are interested in smoking, most likely they are because they're going to come to your content, they're going to want that. And they'll give you, they'll freely, willingly give you their name and their email. And in, in order to get their name and their email, you're going to have to create content to get in front of them, content that they're going to be interested in. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, after lead magnet is the landing page. Now, a landing page consists of a headline, a subheadline, a space with their name, a space with their email, and then a submit button. Okay, the headline is going to be something like um, free checklist, how to do X and Y without Z. That's one of my favorite headlines. And then you're just going to have a very, um, very sterile page where you're collecting the name and the email. You don't want to have a bunch of junk on your page because it lowers conversions. Okay. So after your landing page, you're going to have, you're going to create an autoresponder email sequence and then a broadcast email sequence. With the autoresponder email sequence, you are going to email them daily or however much you feel comfortable reminding them about the, the pain point. If they come to you because you're creating a channel about smoking, you can provide an email about three tips to have better flavor on your meat. You can add another video, um, you know Clark. Um, you could create another um, another autoresponder talking about the pros and cons of using butcher paper, things of that nature. So as long as it resonates with the, the target audience, you can send out those emails. Okay. After you've set up your email marketing, the reason why I want to do this first is that this is the part that's going to potentially take the longest. But you have do you have trouble with people giving you a bunk email? See the the way that yes and no. So. The reason why I don't necessarily have trouble with it is because I will wrap up my lead magnet in there. I will send them the lead magnet via email. So if, if they really want that lead magnet, they're going to give me their name and their email. And if, you know, if they give me bad email, oh, well, they're probably not going to buy from me anyway. So I won't lose, I won't lose sleep with that. But there are tons of people that give bad emails all the time. Uh, just because they want to see where it goes. Um, another question that you you might be thinking is, uh, do your competitors enter in their name and their email? Yeah, of course, because they want to see what you're doing. 
they want to copy or, or maybe adapt whatever it is that um, that that you're doing because they may think you're successful. Um, but after you put together your email marketing, and the reason why I like doing the email marketing in this order is because once we have this set up, the system's going to be automated. I am not going to be manually sending out emails to everybody. The autoresponder is going to do the heavy lifting. So whenever someone enters their name and their email, they jump onto my autoresponder sequence and they're going to get emails from me every single day or every other day, however long it is. So now that we have the email marketing set up, the next step is to det determine where you're going to get traffic. Now, you may have heard the traffic word before, but it just basically means where you're going to create content. Now, you can create content on TikTok. In fact, um, in fact I see a lot of people talking about cooking and smoking meats on TikTok. It's a great place to go. Uh, but you can do this on YouTube, start a blog, Instagram works, Pinterest works as well. And of course, you could um, do Google or even Facebook groups. All of these work. And to be successful, you just need one of these and you need to be consistent. Now, as you start to gain more knowledge and understanding, you can repurpose your content in multiple places. For example, um, Right now, I'm streaming on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook group, Twitter, LinkedIn, and I think somewhere else as well. But that's after I have kind of built a foundation. I believe in the very beginning, you should focus on one just so that, you know, you can start building on, you can start building momentum on one. Oftentimes, people spread themselves too thin very early on. Thanks for the likes that are coming in. I appreciate it. They spread themselves too thin early on, they get frustrated and they give up. They don't really know where they're going. And plus they're trying to learn a bunch of different tips and tricks and skills all at one time. It can be overwhelming. Thanks for the likes that are coming in. I appreciate it. So what you need to do, and this is step four, is you need to identify where you create content. Now people ask me, where's the best place to create content? Now I should, before I continue, I've been talking about affiliate marketing for four years. Um, and I didn't start my online business by talking about affiliate marketing. I started my online business talking about stand mixers and security cameras and microwaves. Um, so what I'm telling you will work across any niche, across any platform, because I've done this with multiple niches and multiple platforms. Okay. Anyway, um, once you figure out, oh, the, the question that people ask me all the time is, where's the best place to, to create content? And I, I, I give, there's two, two things that you should um, consider when creating content. You should create content where you feel comfortable and you should create content where your target audience is hanging out. For example, if we're talking about smokers, outdoor cooking utensils like smokers, it would make sense to go to a forum dedicated to video games, okay? Are people hanging out on TikTok and they're smoking meat and cooking outdoors? Yes. So that could be a good place. So could Facebook and YouTube and all sorts of places, right? So you want to make sure that you think your likes are coming in. Um, I appreciate it. If you have not liked it, go ahead and give this thing a like. Let the old algorithm know that it's uh, that this information is helpful. Anyway, um, once you've identified your your target at your, your where you're going to create traffic, the next step is keyword research. And keyword research is simply the art and science of figuring out where your target audience is hanging out, okay? Um, sorry, uh, keyword research is simply figuring out the questions that your target audience is asking. And there's a number of ways to do it, okay? If you have an understanding of your target audience, you know exactly what the questions that they're asking. Um, let me give you an example. I'm going to go to a paid keyword research tool, and I could type in something like, how long to smoke. And this is going to be aimed at people that want to know how long it takes to smoke something at a certain degree or temperature. Uh, for example, top result. Well, there are 17,000 keywords, and this is searched 376,000 times per month. The top result is how to smoke a pork butt. This question is asked 13,000 times per month, and it has a keyword difficulty of 26. But what you could do essentially is you could create content teaching people how long to smoke pork butt. Now within that, 
you have to think, okay, um, people that are interested in smoke, smoking pork butts, what else are they going to be interested in? They're going to be interested in maybe, like I mentioned, like an apron. They might be interested in utensils. They might be interested in, in buying meat. There are meat affiliate programs out there that you could partner with. Um, they might be interested in getting a, a um, not not that kind of smoking. Um, we're talking about smoking, uh, uh, outdoor cooking smoking, smoker. Um, they might be interested in different types of smokers or grills, um, especially if theirs is, is breaking down. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a different type of, of smoker. But I'm talking about, so like another one is how long to smoke a turkey. That is searched 12,000 times per month. And so what you're going to do, and, and we're going to talk about all the different um, all the different keywords that you can you can create. But if I go to Google right now and I type in how to smoke a pork butt, hit enter. The top result, Omaha Joe's has a has the answer, right? But if we look at this, and this actually looks like it's a um, e-commerce site where they're selling their own. Uh, it looks like they are. I don't know what they're selling, but what we're looking for is we're looking for blogs. Now, another thing that you could do is you could look up in. Uh, you could create content about ingredients so um, or, or even recipes. So I'm just going to go to, let's go to Hey Grill Hey. Let's see what this one is. Okay, so on this website, they've got email marketing set up, which we already talked about. Um, it looks like they also have some ads on here. Um, let's see, email marketing again. So what I would do is I would... I would put together, and, and you guys will see this a lot. If someone is asking how long to smoke a pork butt, you give them the entire process, and then you can put affiliate links to the different products that they need. So, for example, with a, with a smoke uh, with a pork butt, they might need spices, they might need mustard, they might need um, they, they they might need aluminum foil. I even mentioned they might need the um, the actual food. You could actually go out and become an affiliate or Amazon and have a link to the spices or, or Walmart and have a link to the spices and a link to the, the aluminum foil. The reason why people will click on your affiliate links is because you're saving them time and you're helping them solve a problem. And when you do that, that's how you're successful online. People that can save time for someone and help them solve a problem can and will be successful online. And you can do this with, with literally anything. And so this is really cool. Uh, but if we go back over, so like um, like we were talking about how long to smoke chicken breast, uh, people are also asking like how to grill something. How to grill is another question that people are asking. How to grill or how long to grill. So if we do like how to grill, there's over 107,000 keywords. It's searched 1.1 million times per month. And the top result is how long to grill chicken breast, how to grill salmon, how long to grill burgers. So people are asking these questions and you can help them out by A, answering the question for them and then providing things that they might want or need to make their grilling life easier. And it's really as simple as that. Now, that's just one type of keyword that we can do. Um, before we jump into the other keywords, let's talk about some more keyword research. We can also find keywords by looking at competitor websites. We can look at competitor YouTube channels. I just used a paid keyword research tool. We can look at TikTok accounts in our niche or, or, or our space. Um, there's a thing called the glossary method. Hey, thanks for the likes for coming in. I appreciate it. There's a thing called the glossary method that you can do. And basically with the glossary method, you are looking up keywords related to your niche. For example, if we're talking about outdoor cooking things and we look for glossary, we are looking for terms that only members of that community will use, know, and understand. Okay. Um, let me just do, let's say, um, outdoor, outdoor smoker uh, glossary. Now, this may not work for everything, but if we look at this, cooking and barbecue glossary. If we click on this one, now you guys obviously can't see it, but two zone cooking is something that only people that grill will know and understand. 
Um, acidic is pretty common. El dente, amazing ribs. Um, I'm trying to find another one that only people that are within the cooking space would understand. So we can create content that speaks directly to the people that no one understand our jargon or our language. Uh, let's see. Hmm, barbecue sauce. Bark. bark is a good one. If I say bark, there are, there are two types of people in the world. If I say bark, some people are going to think about, maybe there are three types of people. If I say bark, people are going to think about maybe a dog barking. Or they're going to think about tree barks. Or they're going to think about uh, the bark that comes on the outside, the crispy part of the outside of like a brisket. And if I am creating content about how to get the best bark, on a brisket, that's speaking directly to that target audience. Um, let me see if I can just find another one real quick, but bark was a good one. Uh, let's see, there's some there's some okay ones, but um, braising, I think could be one. Briskets, BTU is another one. Anyway, um, but that's how you would use the glossary method, okay? The other one is a website called Answer the Public. So we can type in a few of our keywords right in the Answer the Public, and then we can get a variety of, of, of terms back. Now, when you're using Answer the Public, and this is important, don't just use the keywords that you find, okay? Because there have been thousands, if not millions of people that have already tried that method, and that method will not work. If you're going to use Answer the Public, use it as a starting point. Get those ideas and then plug them into a different research tool, whether it's Google, whether it's Ahrefs, plug it somewhere else so that you can get more results, better results. Because if you just take whatever into the public tells you, there are literally thousands of people that already thought of that. <clears throat> and you'll have a very difficult time ranking for those types of things. <clears throat> the final way that you can go is probably the hardest way but it's the most consistent way to find keywords. And that's called the alphabet soup method. Now with the alphabet soup method, you are going to go to your keyword research. You're going to go to your search bar, whether it's on Google or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, wherever it is, and you're going to type in your keywords. So like how to smoke, uh, how to smoke pork butt, we'll say. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through each letter of the alphabet to see what pops up. So when I hit the space bar, it says how to smoke pork butt space bar, and then it has roast and an electric smoker on a Traeger on a pellet grill. What I would do, excuse me, is write down those keywords with the intention that I might want to create content. But this is the most tedious way, but it's usually the most um, complete way to make sure that you're doing thorough keyword research. That way will take the longest by far. Anyway. Um, now that we have talked about keyword research, the final step really is to come down to creating content. Now, I have my cheat sheet here somewhere. Oh, here we go. So when it comes to creating content, this is how you should create it. All right, this is how you should create content. Is alphabet soup better than... Um, so I don't know that, in my opinion... I like using paid, the paid keyword research tool because it's faster. It's going to save time. However, if you use Google, you're going to get, you know for sure that the, the results are coming from Google. You're going to wind up spending weeks using the alphabet soup method. However, and, and I don't know if you're in my membership, but um, however, if you use a paid keyword research tool like Ahrefs, you can get all of your keyword research done in like a half an hour, hour at the most. That same keyword research would take you, would take you days, if not weeks to use. Anyway, <clears throat> this is what we are going to use to create our content, okay? This is the inverted pyramid. At the very top, this is where people, everybody hangs out. They're happy. They don't know they have a problem. Once they are introduced to a problem, and I'll give you an example of, of me, I am. I have cooked many briskets. I've cooked many racks of ribs. I've, I've, I've cooked many salmon, salmons, salmon. However, I've never smoked a pork butt. 
And so I was happy. I was at Costco and I saw that they had um, a smoked, uh, they had pork butt and I want to smoke it. And so that's when I entered into this funnel. This is the largest portion of the group of people. It's also the most competitive. But this is how people go from nothing to making a buying decision. The more information they, they learn and, and attain, the better the questions they ask. And so we can actually look at this in a few different directions. So up here, people are asking very general, very basic, who, what, when, where, how, why. The next step down is the best X for Y. Now, people might be asking about the best stand mixer for um, kneading dough or baking bread. Or they might be asking about the best smoker for whatever. Let me see. Let me give you a good example. Um, we could go to Google and we could type in, best smoker for and people are looking up the best smoker for beginners for brisket for home use for fish for sausage for price for cold smoking so people are looking up best x for y now it's important for you think about your buying habits no one ever just knows what they want or what they need immediately they are asking questions of various um, level of information so after best X for Y, they're asking best X under Y. So they know the problem and they know the solution. They just want it to fit whatever their budget is. For example, we can type in best smoker, best smoker under. And people are asking best smoker under 500, under 1,000, under 300, 400, 2,000, and so on. But again, think about how you buy stuff. Usually... If you have a budget, most of us do, you know what you want to buy, but you just want to find one that will fit your budget. And that's how literally millions of people make their buying decision. So now that we have that, we're going to do X, X versus Y. Uh, at the beginning of this video, I talked about how I had a master built smoker. I don't even know what kind of have the, the model number. So people, and, and actually, let me back up a little bit. So when people are looking up who, what, when, where, why, how, you can give them a step-by-step -step guide on how to do something. When people are looking up best X for Y, you can give them a list of the five or six best X for Y. So the, the five best smokers for a beef brisket. When people are looking up best X under Y, once again, you can give them a list of five or six best smokers under $500. The next step is X versus Y. So here, they start to have an idea of the problem and the solution. They know what they want. They just want to confirm that they're making the best solution, or the, the best, they want to make sure that they are buying the best product for their needs. Again, I'll give you an example. Um, I have a master built smoker, right? And if I just type in versus, the answers that pop up are master built smoker versus Traeger versus Char Boral Smoker, Pit Boss, Weber Smoky Mountain. So people are trying to compare the difference between the two smokers. But usually what happens is people have a model number that they like. Um, for example, let me see if I can just do master built. Um, let's do with a three. Oh, master built gravity 800 series. A lot of people once they have identified the smoker they want, they're gonna try and compare it to its competitors to see which one's better. Uh, for example, we've got Master Built Gravity Series 800 versus the 1050 versus the Traeger versus the Char Griller 980. And so basically what you're going to do is you're just going to do a comparison. You're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each. And then at the end, you could put your affiliate link to both let them make the decision, and either way, you earn a commission. Now, you can do this again and again and again, okay? So after that, we've got alternatives. Now, for example, Master Built Gravity Series 800, they want to buy it, but they just want to do one more check. We're right here under alternatives. They, they just want to do one more check before they pull the trigger. So they'll go look up alternatives, and then 
That's where you can give a list of the five or six best alternatives and let them make the decision. And then at the very bottom of the funnel is review. Now, hopefully you'll notice that this is the smallest part of the funnel, but it's the part closest to the, um, to the money. That's because people are deciding all day, every day. They're deciding maybe between the Master Build Gravity Series or the Traeger or the Pellet Grill, whatever it is. That's why this part is so narrow and so small. But if they are aware of the product name, that means they're very close to buying. So reviews, unboxings, tutorials, uh, first impressions, setup. People are searching that before buying because they want to know if this is the right thing for them. And you guys can, and anybody can do this. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be special. This is something that anybody can do. In addition, like I mentioned, if we figure out other digital products that we could sell, we can be wildly successful online. Um, we could create, again, like I mentioned, a monthly membership. We could create um, a, maybe a course on how to create, how to make award-winning, competition-worthy smoke ribs and sell it. Um, we could we could actually do something for different holidays. There's so many opportunities out there for this. Now I'm talking about cooking. This could be extrapolated into other other niches as well. Should we create content on all levels of the pyramid? Yes. And it's a funnel. Pyramid sounds bad. Um, yes, create con create content at, at every level. Don't just uh, so I tell all of my students to uh, at the very beginning start at the bottom of the funnel so that you can start getting some traffic in. But eventually you're going to want to move up and down that funnel. Because the cool part is is when whenever someone enters into this funnel, they're going to make three decisions. They're going to ask more questions, they're going to either come down and buy or they're going to leave the funnel entirely. So it's very possible that you get someone that asks questions at the top of the funnel and comes down and makes a purchase. There's a higher probability that if someone's looking up a review, excuse me, if someone's looking up a review, they're going to come down and make a purchase. But at every level, three decisions are being, or one decision being made, they have three choices. They either ask a better question, a more detailed question, they buy or they leave. Maybe they decide that getting a smoker isn't for them and they're just going to be satisfied with their with, with the grill or it's too expensive, whatever it is. But yeah, yeah, create content at, at every level. The students that I work with, I tell them to start at the bottom simply because they already have that product. They're going to be familiar with that product and it's going to be easier for them to talk about that one product. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Any questions? Is this making sense? Did I go too fast? This is a part that you want me to kind of take a step back and, and go over again. Let me know. Let me know if this makes sense. Do you recommend making several versions of X versus Y so that we have more opportunities of traffic? Yeah, of course, definitely. So let's say, again, you have that master built. You can do master built versus Traeger. Master built versus... Uh, pit boss, master built versus whatever. In fact, there are entire blog, uh, entire websites dedicated to X versus Y content. I don't recommend that you only do that, but I recommend that that's a, a great way to go. Great way to be successful. And again, I say this all the time. You can do this, but it's going to be more than just 10 videos. Expect to create 100 videos. If you're not prepared to create 100 videos for this, then this isn't the best place for you. Uh, there will people, there will be people that lead you to believe that you can create one video and then all of a sudden um, money's going to rain out of the sky. It usually doesn't happen that way. Most people are, are not unicorns and they're going to have to work at it. This, is, this may take time, especially if you've never set up your systems before, especially if you've never created content before, especially if you've, you know, haven't done some of those things like uh, writing emails. It can take time. So don't be so hard on yourself if it takes longer than a month to get everything up and running. Okay. 
Make sure you have realistic, attainable goals. Thanks for the likes for coming in. I appreciate it. Make sure you have real, attainable goals. I'm not going to sell you the dream of, of going from zero to quitting your job in three weeks because that, that's not attainable for 99% of the world. There's that 1% that may be able to do it. Um, and, and you don't even really know what you, they've got going on in the background for, for that to actually happen. Um, which, which is funny in and of itself. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Is this making sense so far? Anything you disagree with? Anything that you want? You know, I don't know. Any questions answered? But this is how you can go about being successful online. And it's really as simple as that. And the cool thing is, is people are doing this all day, every day. Like, don't take my word for it. Go out and, and do the research yourself. Go out and Google how long to smoke a rack of ribs at 200 degrees or 250. And you're going to see for yourself that people are doing it and they're going, they're going to be following the exact same method that I told you. They're doing email marketing. They may have a digital product that they're selling. Um, and they are definitely doing affiliate marketing where they're trying to get you to click on an affiliate link that takes you over to Amazon or Traeger or whatever. Like I said, some of the big grilling uh, companies have affiliate programs. And let me just tell you real quick how to find an affiliate program. If we wanted to get into the smoking niche, I would type in something like outdoor grill affiliates program and hit enter. And okay, so Barbecue Guys has an affiliate program. Grill Masters Club, Grill Party, they all have affiliate programs. So let me open up Barbecue Guys. So barbecue guys have barbecue grills and smokers. Uh, they'll pay a 4% commission with a 30-day cookie window. Average order is $1,100. So what's 4% of $1,100? Uh, let's see, 4%. Uh, that's $44. Okay. So you get three sales per day. You're over 120 now, that may take a little while, but it's possible. It's something that you can do. And like I said, that's the average order value. Some of these are more expensive. If we look at, um, let's look at pellet grills for the barbecue guys. One of, This one grill is $3,800. Okay. So what's 4% of $3,800? Uh, let's see if we did that. We're looking at oh, what is this going on here? So we're looking at we're looking at about one hundred and fifty one dollars, one hundred and fifty, one hundred and fifty one dollars selling that one drill. If your if your clone was just starting to learn about affiliate marketing. From original, also, how long until he made his first dollar? Um, if I were to coach me, I would say start creating TikTok videos, start creating YouTube videos. Um, how long? I think I told this story before. I'm not sure if I have. Um, I earned my first commission in, in 12 hours. Now, again, that's not the that's not the norm. Just recently, I did a case study where I earned my first commission through TikTok on a brand new account in 11 days. But that commission was like 83 cents, okay? But I don't care about the 83 cents. I care about the proof of concept. I know that a channel that had less than 100 followers on TikTok can generate income. And if I continue to do it, it's going to snowball and it's going to get more. So um, I would tell that person, I would say, listen to Alston because he kind of knows what he's talking about and create content on TikTok doing coupon codes right now 
And then once you start earning commissions, you can start getting some money in the front door. Um, and then you can be successful. So like I said, I, I, the quickest I've ever done it, and it was my first commission coincidentally, was in 12 hours through Quora. 12 hours through Quora um, answering questions with Bluehost, Bluehost affiliate program. Uh, which is web hosting, but I would say realistically, two weeks, two weeks to see your first sign of success. Thanks for the likes that are coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, two weeks to your first sign of success. Once you have your first sign of success, that is going to give you energy. That's going to give you motivation. That's going to give you encouragement. That's going to light a fire under you, under you to do more and to be more. Okay. When you first start this venture, you're not totally convinced that you can be successful online. Sure, you hear people telling you that it's possible. Sure, you hear people saying that they're doing it. But until you actually do it, hey, thanks for the follow, Mike. I appreciate it. Um, until you actually do it yourself, you are not 100% convinced. But once it does happen for you, and, and it will happen for you if you're consistent, you will have a fire lit under you to go again and again and again and to go harder and harder and harder. And then it'll be, it'll feel almost like, um, not like an addiction, but you'll feel, you'll, you'll start thinking about all the different ways. Thanks for your advice. You're, you're welcome. Um, and thanks for the likes. I appreciate it. Um, it will feel like, um, like an adrenaline rush. Um, you'll, you'll be energized to wake up every morning and check your accounts to see if you've got, more um, more commissions coming in. But, you know, that's kind of a double-sided coin, really, because what happens is, is you almost start attaching your value to those emails. Now, and I don't think anybody really, nobody talks about this. So listen up, because this is important. When you get started with affiliate marketing and you finally get your first commission after working on it for so long, for so hard, you're trying and trying and trying. You finally get your first commission, regardless of how much it is, that's going to empower you to go out and want to do it again and again and again. However, if you start, if you go two days without going in commission, without you know generating any sales, you're going to start feeling down about yourself and about your ability and everything that you think you know about making money online. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Not a lot of people talk about that. You kind of, you start to tie your worth, your self-worth into if you generate commissions. And it's even worse, to be honest with you, if you do high-ticket affiliate marketing. If you go a couple days without, without generating high-ticket commissions, you will really start to feel down about yourself. You'll start to question everything. Um, and so that's something that you're going to have to look out for. You're going to have to be careful with that. Because it's really easy to start getting frustrated with yourself and start questioning everything that you're doing. Nobody talks about that. Like, and I'm not a big like mental health guy, but that's like it's it's a it's a real thing because you're kind of on an island by yourself. You're trying to create this income stream basically out of nothing, and you know. You might feel like you're doing all the right things. You're saying all the right things and it's not coming in. It's not working. You really start to kind of like spiral. And it's all about like, and again, I'm not a, yeah. And in, in, in the very beginning, you're going to have roller coaster rides. Now for me, my, my roller coaster is pretty stable. It's pretty flat. But in the beginning, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of swings. Like you're going to have one day where maybe you make $200. And then you might go three days where you make 75 cents and you're like, oh, this isn't working. Um, so, yeah, so that's important. And, and then that kind of that has an impact or an effect on everything else that you do, all the content that you create, um, you know, the negative energy thing. Again, I'm not a big energy guy, but it does have an impact on all of that, um, even, you know, relationships with your friends and family. And you start thinking about, okay, what, what can I do better this time? Or 
What am I saying that's not working? What am I doing that that's not working? And that happens early on. You know, you're 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 telling yourself to to quit and to keep and to not do it anymore. But um, yeah, eventually it will stable off. It'll it'll level off, and you'll have a consistent week. And you might have a week that's a little bit better, and then you might have a, a week that's slightly worse. But you'll get to a point where it levels off, and and things are are pretty smooth sailing, and you know, pretty consistent, which is cool. But um, yeah, that's something to, to look out for that not a lot. I don't think anybody talks about it. in the very beginning. You're you're going to be on a roller coaster ride, and you're going to feel pretty bad about yourself early on. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Sorry to be a, a Debbie Downer, but I just thought about that. Um, <clears throat> you just have to stay the course. Just have to keep doing it because, and, and you have to have trust and belief that what you're doing is working. Uh, any other questions? Agree, disagree? And if you've not done so, please be sure to give this thing a like, comment, share, follow, uh, do all of that good stuff. Let the algorithms know that this content is helpful and it's helping you out. Um, great. Happy to hear that, that the, that the information is helping you out. Uh, but again, the cool thing is, is that anybody can do this. I know that for a fact that if I can do this, uh, you can too. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be smart. You know, you, you just have to be consistent. And for most people, that's really difficult. You have to be consistent and you have to have internal motivation. Most people don't have one of those two things. Either they're not consistent for long enough or they're not internally motivated. Because when you're running your own business, no one's going to tell you, hey, Alston, you need to create content today. No one's going to tell you that because no one really cares about your business other than you. So that's something really important to understand. In order to be successful, you just need these two things. You need to have internal motivation and you need to be consistent. If you're struggling to be successful online, you're probably missing one of those two things. You're either missing internal motivation or you're missing the consistency. That's what you, those are the two things you need. Anything else I think can be taught, can be learned, can be unlearned, but internal motivation can't be taught. Like I have 70,000 people on my YouTube channel and I tell them step-by-step step what to do basically every day, five times a week. And most of the people over there do not have the internal motivation to do what I'm telling them to do. Even when people will comment on my videos that what you're telling me works, what I, I did what you said step-by-step step and it works. Most people will say it'll never work for me. Or most people will say he, he paid somebody to, to put that comment in or whatever. It's because they don't have the internal motivation. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> Riley, I, it's great that you're getting an office set up, but don't wait for that stuff. You don't need a fancy office. Start with what you have, start with where you're at, and just get to work. It's more important that you... You know, for, for all I care, you could be in a closet creating content. That's more important than, than having the right setup. Uh, what happened here? Uh, uh, it happened again. My computer is being weird. I got to restart it. Anyway, um, yes, those two things. That's all you need. Internal motivation and the ability to be consistent. That's it. Everything else can be learned. Everything else can be trained and, and attained. But if, I can't motivate you. I can't teach you to be consistent. Yeah, I don't think I can teach you to be consistent. And, and you know, that's kind of my blind spot. That's that's the one problem that I have is, is um, when people don't have the internal motivation. I'm not a – I don't think that I'm a good enough motivational speaker – to get someone to take action. And if they take action, it's only for a day or two. For me, it's like, okay, my my interest, desire, motivation is more important than anything else. And so I'm gonna do what it takes. Do you make YouTube? Yes, I have I have over 70,000 followers on YouTube. My first TikTok account 
had over 47,000 followers too. It just got, uh, it got, it got shut down. Um, and I couldn't bring it back to life. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so I'm here with, with 2000 and this account's even shadow banned. So uh, things are not going great for me on, on the old, on the old, old TikTok front, front. But here I am. I am still standing. That may be another revenue stream for you. Pay Austin to be your drill. So I would not be a good sergeant. Because I, I, I can't understand. Like, you know what needs to be done. I'm telling you what needs to be done. You just have to go out and do it. So I would not be a, a, a good drill sergeant for anybody. Because my question would be like, why haven't you done this? You know exactly what needs to be done. Why haven't you done it? What's preventing you? Why are you standing in your own way? That's the question that I would ask. Why are you standing in your own way? And that's what a lot of this is, to be honest with you. A lot of it is people are standing in their own way. If you got out of your own way, you could be successful online. And I say that to people all the time. If you got out of your own way, you could be successful online. Uh, the people will say something like, um, pe people will say something like, I don't, I don't understand technology. People will say stuff like, I don't have the money to invest. People will say stuff like, uh, what are the other common things that people say? I don't have time. That's a big one. People say all the time, I don't have time. I do a lot of my work when I'm sitting and pick up and drop offline for my kids' school. I come up with ideas while I'm sitting and pick up and drop offline. People will say, hey, I don't have the technology. I don't know the technology. While they're typing that to you, on YouTube or TikTok. If you have the ability to comment on a post, you have the ability to create content. So I never understand why people say, I don't have the technology, I don't have the time. When I first got started with my online business, I used to, I used to um, sit in my car on my lunch break. Yeah, in the very beginning, you don't even have to learn video editing. It's more important that you create the content. Um, when I first got started my online business, on my lunch break, I would go out and I would write notes. I would take notes on blog posts that I was going to write so that when I got home, I could be more efficient with my time. You know, I'd make an outline about security cameras. When I first started my business, we had... We had twins, twins that didn't believe in sleeping, and they still don't believe in sleeping, that didn't believe in sleeping. And so I could have said, oh, these twins are too much. I'm not getting any sleep. I'm working full time. Now is not the right time. But that was the exact right time because there's always going to be something that comes up. There's always going to be something that gets in the way. You're going to have to... And I, and I say this all the time. We make time for the things that we want. So if you really want an online business, if you really want it, you will make time. You will you'll stop watching Netflix. Netflix is always going to be there. For a long time, I stopped playing video games and I stopped watching football. Because I figured, why am I watching other people live their dream? Instead, I could go out and be creating my own. And my dream was to not work for somebody ever again. So I stopped playing video games for a long time. Um, I stopped watching football on Sundays because I was trying to get to my dream of not working for anybody ever again. But again, we make time for the things that we want. If you want to be successful online, you can. You just need the two things that I mentioned. Um, internal motivation and consistency. Uh, all right. So, any other questions? Any other questions? Oh, Emily came here to say the same thing. This is the honest, this is the honesty people who are feeling desperate really need. They need to be taken advantage of when they return. Um, 
let's see here. Where are you located? Michigan here. I'm on the other side of the, the lake in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Um, when I used to work at a cable company, we used to work at one of our territories was uh, Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, oh, I came over here to check how many followers I have. So I have 70,784 subscribers on YouTube. That's what I was looking at. Any other questions? It's hot in here. Uh, let's see. Great. All right. So if you don't have any other questions, I think we'll wrap this up for today. I think I will be back tomorrow at about the same time. You're welcome, uh, Riley. Be sure to like, comment, follow, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Let the old algorithm know uh, that this information has been helpful. But thank you very much for the likes and all that good stuff and, and the comments. Live streams are much better when, when people are talking. So I appreciate it. You guys have a great night and we will see you tomorrow.